100 days ago, we started something that most ranchers said was impossible. They told us the numbers wouldn't add up, that we were wasting our time, and that modern fattening methods couldn't compete with traditional long-term feeding. Well, today, everything changes, because what we discovered in these 100 days will completely transform the way you think about cattle fattening. And I have to warn you, the final weight results, they're not what anyone expected, not even us. Stay with me, because in the next few minutes, you're gonna see the exact feed conversion ratio we achieved, the daily weight gain that shocked even experienced ranchers, and the one critical mistake we made on day 67 that almost destroyed everything. If you're raising cattle for beef, or if you're thinking about starting a fattening program, what you're about to learn could be worth thousands of dollars to your operation. Let me take you back to day one. We selected 15 steers, all crossbred animals, Average starting weight of 420 pounds each. Nothing special, nothing extraordinary, just typical feeder cattle that you could find at any livestock auction. The goal was simple. Reach market weight in 100 days using a science-based feeding protocol that any rancher, big or small, could replicate. Now, here's what most people get wrong about intensive fattening programs. They think it's just about throwing more grain at the cattle. They believe that if you increase the feed, you automatically increase the gain. And that's exactly why so many ranchers lose money on their fattening operations. Because it's not about the quantity of feed, it's about the strategic combination of nutrients at the right time in the animal's growth curve. During the first 30 days, we focused entirely on rumen adaptation. This is the phase that determines whether your entire program succeeds or fails, and almost nobody talks about it. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot rush this phase. We started with a 70-30 forage to concentrate ratio, slowly adjusting the rumen microbiome to handle higher energy loads. The average daily gain during this period was only 2.1 pounds per day. I know what you're thinking, that sounds low, right? But here's the thing, this foundation phase is what allowed us to push the limits later without causing acidosis or digestive upset. And let me tell you about the biggest mistake ranchers make during this stage. They see slow gains and panic. They immediately increase the grain percentage thinking they need to speed things up. What happens next? Bloat, acidosis, sick animals, and a complete collapse of the feeding program. Have you seen this happen in your own operation? It's devastating, both emotionally and financially. By day 31, something incredible started happening. The cattle's rumens were fully adapted, their appetites increased naturally, and we transitioned to a 40-60 forage to concentrate ratio. This is where the magic happens. And this is where we started seeing gains that most people don't believe until they see the data. Days 31 through 70, we averaged 3.4 pounds of daily gain per animal. Let that sink in for a moment. 3.4 pounds every single day for 40 consecutive days. The feed conversion ratio during this phase was 5.2 pounds of dry matter intake per pound of gain. Now, if you're familiar with beef production metrics, you know that anything under six to one is considered excellent. But here comes the part that almost ruined everything, and I need you to pay close attention because this could save your entire operation if you're planning an intensive fattening program. On day 67, we noticed one of our lead steers was off his feed. His ears were slightly droopy, nothing dramatic, just a subtle change in behavior. We made a decision that in hindsight was almost catastrophic. We thought it was just a minor setback, so we continued the feeding protocol without adjustment. Within 48 hours, three more animals showed similar symptoms. What we were seeing was the early stages of subclinical acidosis, a silent killer in high grain feeding programs. Here's what we learned, and this is absolutely critical. When you're pushing cattle hard with high concentrate diets, you must monitor behavior daily, not weekly, daily. The difference between catching a problem on day one versus day three can mean the difference between a minor adjustment and a complete health crisis. We immediately backed off the concentrate ratio, introduced a buffering agent into the feed mix, and increased the particle size of the forage component. Within five days, all animals were back on track. But those five days cost us approximately 60 pounds of potential gain across the group. In dollar terms, that's real money left on the table. 
Now, let me show you what happened when we adjusted our protocol based on this learning. But before we get to the final results, if you're getting value from this real-world data, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button right now for Biggest Bulls and Cow. We're building a community of ranchers who believe in science-based cattle production, and your success is our mission. Drop a comment below and tell me, what's your biggest challenge with cattle fattening? I read every single comment, and your questions help shape our future content. All right. Let's talk about the final 30 days, because this is where everything we learned came together, and the results are going to surprise you. From day 71 to day 100, we implemented what I call the precision finishing phase. We didn't just maintain the feeding program, we optimized it based on individual animal response. And yes, you can do this even if you have a larger herd. Let me explain how. We divided our animals into three groups based on body condition scoring. Group A, seven animals showing optimal finish. Group B, five animals slightly behind the curve. Group C, three animals that were our top performers, showing signs of early fat deposition. Here's the strategy that maximized our returns. Group A stayed on the standard protocol, 55% concentrate, 45% quality forage. Group B received a slight uptick to 60% concentrate with added protein supplementation to push final growth. Group C, and this is counterintuitive, we actually reduced their concentrate to 50% because additional energy would have just deposited excess fat without adding valuable muscle. This individualized approach during the final phase added an estimated 45 pounds of additional saleable weight across the entire group compared to keeping everyone on the same program. Think about that, 45 pounds of extra beef just by paying attention and adjusting. The daily gains during this final phase averaged 3.7 pounds across all groups. The feed efficiency tightened to 4.8 to 1, which is exceptional for finishing cattle. But here's something that shocked us. The cattle in Group C, the ones we throttled back on concentrate, actually graded higher on carcass quality because they had optimal marbling without excessive external fat. Now let's talk about the final weigh-in, the moment of truth. Our 15 steers started at an average of 420 pounds. After 100 days, the average final weight was, and I want you to really hear this, 793 pounds per animal. That's an average total gain of 373 pounds per animal over 100 days. Total gain for the entire group? 5,595 pounds of beef. The overall average daily gain for the entire 100-day period was 3.73 pounds. The total feed conversion ratio, including all phases, came in at 5.4 pounds of feed for pound of gain. Let me put this into financial perspective. At current market rates in most regions, that's approximately $12,000 in added value from 15 animals in just over three months. Subtract feed costs, veterinary care, and labor, and we're looking at a profit margin that most traditional long-term feeding programs simply cannot match. But here's what's even more important than the numbers, the lessons we learned that you can apply immediately. Number one, respect the rumen adaptation phase. Slow and steady wins this race every single time. Rush it and you'll pay the price in sick animals and lost gains. Number two, monitor behavior daily when running high concentrate programs. Your eyes are your best diagnostic tool. A subtle change today can prevent a major crisis tomorrow. Number three, not all animals respond the same way to the same feed program. If you can implement even basic grouping strategies, you'll see significant improvements in both gain and efficiency. Number four, buffering agents and fiber particle size matter more than most ranchers realize. These are not optional extras. They're essential components of a successful intensive fattening program. Number five, the final 30 days are not just about adding weight. They're about adding the right kind of weight. Quality matters just as much as quantity when it comes time to market your animals. So, there you have it. 100 days of real data, 
real challenges, and real solutions that you can apply in your own operation starting today. Whether you're running 10 head or 1,000 head, these principles scale and they work. If this video added value to your cattle operation, I need you to do three things right now. First, smash that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow, because we're just getting started with this kind of in-depth, practical content. Second, share this video with another rancher who's working hard to improve their operation. Let's lift each other up in this industry. And third, drop a comment below. Tell me your experience with fattening programs. What's worked? What hasn't? What questions are you still struggling with? We're not just a channel, we're a community of dedicated cattlemen and cattlewomen who believe in doing things right, in continuous improvement, and in sharing knowledge that makes all of us better. Your comment might be the answer another rancher desperately needs, or your question might be the topic of our next video. Remember, successful ranching isn't about secrets, it's about science, observation, and the willingness to learn from both successes and failures. These 100 days taught us more than we expected, and I hope they've given you actionable insights that translate into better performance and better profits in your operation. Thank you for investing your time here today. Until the next video, keep learning, keep improving, and keep raising the best cattle you possibly can. This is what we do, and together, we're going to keep getting better at it.